the other thing to say is that there are supplements that are easily available over the counter that contain much higher doses of vitamin D. So the other common dose that you'll see in over-the-counter supplements is a dose of a thousand international units, 25 micrograms. So I saw this today, I went into a chemist and I was looking at some of the things that they were selling and they were selling a vitamin D supplement with this dose in. I advise this dose, the smaller dose, as opposed to this dose. The NHS page uh, advise, and, and the, that's the main reason I advise this dose over this dose. The NHS page advises this one rather than this one. And remember, this vitamin, it's doing something. You, it is uh, overdosing on vitamin D, overloading yourself with vitamin D is a known medical phenomenon. I've never ever seen anyone who has managed to make themselves, uh, given themselves hypervitaminosis D. However, it is a recognised clinical phenomenon that it exists. And this one is a safe dose. This one is probably a safe dose as well, but I would advise this one rather than this one because, you know, if you're taking this higher dose for years and years and years, it might be possible that you could overload yourself on vitamin D. So I would advise this one. Um, I take this dose. I take it every single day and I do so to try and keep my bones strong and prevent myself from getting fractures in the future. That's the reason that I'm taking it, to protect myself from fractures in the future. It makes me feel absolutely nothing. It doesn't give me any side effects. It doesn't give me any positive effects. I feel absolutely the same as if I haven't taken it. It's a very small tablet, very easy to swallow. And as I say, it makes me feel no different, which is exactly what I want. I don't want it to have side effects. I'm taking it to prevent myself from getting uh, problems with my bones in the future. Um, one final thing to say before I end the video. Vitamin D is often one of the things that is used as a last resort by primary care physicians when they have patients coming to them with medically unexplained symptoms. So when people, a, a lot of the time when people come to see their GP uh, with a problem, so some symptoms that they're having, let's say they're getting pains all over their body or they are tired all the time or they are sweating more than they used to and they don't like it, their clothes are becoming wet from sweat all the time. Um, all of these three problems, these examples that I've given, and there are loads of others, all of them need to be investigated and we need to rule out any sort of sinister disease that is causing those symptoms. However, especially in those three cases that I've given you as examples there, often there won't be a sinister disease underlying it. So let's say they've been investigated, so they've had blood tests, potentially imaging done, and all of it's normal. And the GP will then explain to them that these symptoms may well be medically unexplained symptoms, i.e. we're not going to be able to find a reason within the limits of modern science for why they have got this. Now, some people accept that and they go on their way and they don't come back to see their GP. But if they come back again and again and again um, to see their GP with these problems, often they'll end up going and seeing fancier and fancier specialists, potentially. And then the specialist will discharge them saying, no, you know, if they go and see a neurologist, maybe the neurologist will say no neurological explanation for the symptoms. If they see an endocrinologist, the endocrinologist will say no endocrine uh, explanation for symptoms, uh, etc. Uh, so let's say they beam around a bunch of specialists and then they come back to their GP again with the same problem. Let's say it's tired all the time. Their GP might then pull the vitamin D card, which is let's measure your vitamin D just in case it's deficient because maybe vitamin D deficiency could be the cause of your symptoms. And vitamin D deficiency is so common that they often then measure their vitamin D. It comes back as deficient and then we actually have a medical problem that we can treat. Whether it's the cause of the symptoms or not, who knows, but we have found something that we could potentially blame the symptoms on for the person. Uh, and then they tell them to take a vitamin D supplement and see if it helps the symptoms. And uh, this is often a card, as I say, pulled by primary care physicians in the hope of giving these people 
hope that maybe their problem is treatable and maybe the GP's got a magic pill that's going to fix it. Um, so if you do have medically unexplained symptoms, it might be worth starting a vitamin D supplement. And you can see, uh, and by the way, sometimes people do actually get better. Sometimes people who are tired all the time with chronic pain or uh, sweating too much, these three examples that I've just given you, um, sometimes when they take a vitamin, they are found to have vitamin D deficiency. And when they start taking the vitamin D supplement, give after a few months, they start to get relief from these symptoms at long last. So sometimes it truly does work. So why did I actually bring this up? Why well, I'm saying to you that um, if you do have some sort of medical symptoms that you've seen doctors about multiple times and you're unsatisfied because no one's ever been able to give you an answer as to why you've got these symptoms, uh, then maybe you should consider putting yourself on a vitamin D supplement and seeing if you take that every day for a few months, does it make any improvement? I'm not promising it will, but it might make an improvement. Uh, and even if it doesn't make an improvement, this supplement absolutely will improve your health. Uh, it will strengthen your bones and prevent you from getting fractures in the future. So it will not damage you to do this. So it's certainly something that you could consider trying. I am not the sort of doctor who hands out pills. I'm not a pill pusher at all. Uh, I, whenever I give anyone any sort of uh, tablet, I always am thinking, is this actually going to make this person healthier? Or is it just going to cover up some symptom, not cure them at all, just cover up a symptom? And in fact, actually, even though it's covering up the symptom, it isn't actually a nice drug and is actually probably going to have detrimental effects on their health in the long run. Um, and medicines like that, I really steer clear of hugely. So things like opiates, non-steroidals, anticholinergics, um, I, all these sort of medicines that are given for symptom relief but don't actually cure anything and probably actually are really bad for your health if you take them over long periods of time. I'm very, very anti those tablets. Um, but vitamin D is one of those, ta is a tablet, is a magic tablet. It truly does make your health better. Uh, I take it, it's the only tablet that I take. If I get a cold, I won't take even take paracetamol. I'll just grip my teeth and get through it. Um, because I hate tablets so much, and I, um, so I'm not the sort of doctor to push tablets on you, but vitamin D is truly a fantastic tablet, and I truly do recommend it. Everyone should be taking vitamin D. We are, most of us, a huge majority of us, are at risk of getting deficient in this vitamin and getting weak bones because of it, and you will pay the price through fractures in years to come. So take your vitamin D. Thank you.